All right, so where are we at with our goals, you guys? How are we doing? Donna's blowing me out of the water with getting those five bookings. Terry and Mary, how are you guys doing with that? Um, I, I told you I didn't. I, I, in my mind, hey, I Grandma, did. You excuse Grandma just for this once. Thank you, just this once. Okay. I am. Doing... Go ahead, Mary. Go. Um, I'm good just because um, I did two events this past weekend and one of them that I thought was a real dud, um, all of a sudden I got home and I got two messages that these people wanted to book shows. So I was kind of like, whoa. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah, I was really surprised. That. I've never had that happen before. Plus I had sales at both of the events as well. So I am in my happy place and I've got one gal that I need to call. She's got the kid already. I just need to get a date for her. Nice. So, you know, it's, it's moving along. I am just totally stunned by October because um, I've got quite a few sales in already. And Anthony, who is always like turning in sales like a crazy person, only has something like $300 in sales. And so I'm a little worried about what's going on with him. But I'm also stunned by the fact that he doesn't have thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in sales in so far. Hmm. I actually almost have thousands, plural, in already. I do have thousands plural in already. Yeah, I, have, I think when I left this morning it was 1,800. So I'm, I'm, I'm at 38. So oh wow! And Donna, well, you're well, probably the cool thing is is the show this quick cooker. I, I tell y'all, it is totally exciting. But you know, I did something else too. I started using the booking slide again. That's what you said. I need to get. I looked at mine. Mine is the old one. I have to get the new one. Yeah. Um. I just started using it again to remind myself to talk about it. And I don't know that it's that, or if it's just the fact that I'm more consistently, I mean, I always talk about booking shows, but I think that visual of all these things that you get works better than me listing things. I think people glaze over when it's not a visual, but I went to a show the other day and I was an hour late to the show, y'all. It took me two and a half hours to get to the show from traffic and construction and accidents. And I got there at half, at half an hour before it was supposed to start. So it was not like an hour late to the show, but I was an hour late to arriving at the host house. This is another one of those shows of all millennials. I hate that phrase, young adults. Um, and nobody purchased anything at the show itself. They also, they were going to go order online. So right now our show is sitting at $33, which you talk about, you know, driving for two and a half hours and you're irritated. But I have two bookings off of the show already. So, you know, I don't know if it's the booking slide. I don't know if it's the quick cooker, if it's the combination of the two. But I booked, um, yeah, one was actually for December. The quick cooker whole set becomes available in December. Did y'all see the December special? Yes, two, two things at 60% off. Yeah, including the quick cooker set. And I'm like, holy crap, crap. So, um, and the other one hasn't put a date to it yet, so it's not a full bag. But I still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven live shows in a vendor event yet yeah, this, this, this month. This month. Congratulations. Yeah, October. I know. November's not looking like that yet. I got to get that going. But, you know, I, I don't have any doubt that it will. I've got a bunch of vendor events. And I've got two or three cooking shows so far. Three. But four. I have four. Anyway, so yeah. Um, people are booking in close because they want to get in on those specials. The November special is not as hit for a. Yeah, November sucks. Yeah. What is November? I know. I was very disappointed in November. Uh, November is... Cookware classics or something. Cookware selection. I don't know. Let me look real quick. Everybody's on rock, crock, and quick cooker. But I'm hoping maybe I can get somebody that old fogey wants some more stoneware. Yeah, there's a stoneware starter set, the nonstick grill pan, the single burner, the double, the deep cover baker. Nobody even talks about that anymore. Um, I know. Although I did sell one full price the other day. Um, the six-piece cookware set or the multi-purpose, uh, multi-pot with a collapsible strainer. Now, that one, I might have some takers for that because people really are enthused with that. 
But you're going to have to make a decision with that. Do I? I like that one. I like that. I do too. But it's very expensive. Well, it'd be one hundred and twenty dollars at sixty percent off. Yeah. So we might catch some people. Ah. This cookware set, though, for one hundred eighty bucks, that's not it's not a bad deal there either. No. No. So we're just gonna have to get some people talking about. It. The problem is, is I'm all like gung ho talking about the quick cooker, and you know you got to bring it back around and talk about those things too to get people to want to book for it. I'm trying to figure out a recipe that'd be very simple to show with that multi-purpose pot. It takes a while to come to temperature because it's such a thick pot, so it's not so much a, you'd have to get it started before people got there. I wonder if you could do some kind of meat in the quick cooker and just do the pasta in the uh, quick cooker just, to, I mean, in the multi-pot just to show the multi-part and how you can pick it up and, you know. That's a good idea. It. You know, this is, with the old one, I did that spaghetti and meatballs where the, I, uh, you know, you did the spaghetti in the bottom with the uh, you probably can still do that and all that, and then you it the steamed the meatballs on the top, which it, it it amazed me. Yeah, you could probably still do that with this one. The only problem is, is you're not going to be able to do as many meatballs. That's my only hang up with this one is when you're steaming, it, there's not a lot of space. I like that old one in the all-purpose pot much better. I did like that one a lot. Yeah, I refuse to get rid of it because I like the capacity of that one. Oh, you know what? It's in my cupboard because I use it for certain. Yeah, I use it for eggs. It's so much faster for eggs because you can do a whole dozen or so at a time. Awesome. All right, so Mary, go ahead. What? I, um, the show that I have been doing lately, and it is simple, simple, simple to do, but it looks like um, you're doing a lot of stuff. And I've been doing a lot of it. So what I've been doing is I've been doing Mexican in minutes. Okay. And what I do is I start them out with a one minute margarita. When I first arrive, I have um, my hostess uh, have a rice there for me and I pop it into the new rice cooker, pop that into the microwave. Then I do the salsa chicken and um, then they have their choice of either guacamole or a hot lava cake. I can do all of that in a half hour. And mm -hmm. actually, it takes a half hour because I have to wait for the quick cooker to pressure. That's what's taking up the time. But then when the rice comes out, what you do is you throw some cilantro and some lime in there. So you have cilantro, lime, rice. You have the salsa chicken. You have the um, margaritas. And if they want, they have the guacamole with it. If not, they have the hot lava cake with it. It shows a lot of products, a lot of high price products. And I have been getting a lot of nice sales out of it. Hey, can y'all do the lava cake in the every day? Or yes. is it the Dutch oven? No. The every day. Okay. Uh, well, let me tell you this. I was doing it in the every day because that's where I first seen it at. And I did it like four different parties. My fifth party, it bubbled over in our microwave. So now I'm nervous about using the every day. How long did you cook it, Donna? Oh, I did 10 minutes. See, I, I did mine in 12 minutes. minutes. I did mine I only in 12 minutes. minutes and I leave it in the pot until, you know, until we get everything else done. I'll go ahead and usually start it first thing. Yeah, I did mine for 12 minutes. And I had people, well, I had some, I had an old lady buy that at full price because she needed that pot to make that pan, that cake. <laughs> yeah, I have, that's why I have so many people having a party is because they want, you know, that Dutch You do it covered or uncovered? Covered. I did mine uncovered. Huh. See, everybody has, I've heard, <coughs> both ways. Excuse I've me. done it and covered, but the last time I did it uncovered, and I, and there, you couldn't even lick the bowl. It was all gone. I do mine in the Dutch oven, in the uh, Rock Rock Dutch oven, and then I also bring the base along, and I just set it in the base for display more than anything, and that does a lot of those whole sets. Well, I'm going to say something. That probably, if I would have made it, I would have sold a Dutch oven one if I would have had that in the Dutch oven one. But you can't yeah. do it in, in the everyday. 
So I just might do it in the Dutch oven, and I like the idea of having the base to put it in. I do too, because it keeps it warm. And, and if you have that old round picnic uh, basket thing we had, the round ones, they had it in paisley and they had it in black and uh, yes. gray. Uh, your rock cock Dutch oven fits right down in that perfectly. And the, in, the, in the picnic basket? The round one. Isn't that round cooler? Oh, oh, the cooler. Yes, 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 yes. We had a black. We had a black one and a paisley one. Right. Yeah, cool. I actually take two to my parties. That's my carry bag. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's a good idea. Well, I have the mm -hmm. I have the carry thing for it, so I just use that. Yeah, that'll work. Too. We can still get that carry. They can still get that carry bag now. So I almost that. got it for like twenty five bucks, and I said, "Nah, I'll find something else to carry it in." Um, I have um, there. Pamper Chef is replacing my quick cooker carry bag because um, they put a really cheap zipper on that thing, and so there it's, it doesn't have a warranty. But I said, "Look, I've had this thing less than a month, and I can't believe that." You know, because I said, I can send this back to you. I said, look at the zipper. I said, I haven't damaged this thing in any way, but the zipper, the teeth won't grip. So they're sending me another one. In fact, they even sent me a return label to send it back. Hmm. Okay. I put my quick cooker in, you know, the, the kit bag that has the pink line on the front of it. Um, it's black as a whole, but on one of the pockets, it's got the white with the pink kind yeah. of loop across it. It fits perfectly in that. It's got room at the end for something like your flat boards or a couple of other pieces. But it fits perfectly in that bag. It slides in real easy because that bag kind of stands on its own. You go, it's not hard to like get it in. What bag? I can't think what you're talking about. Huh? What bag? Uh, it was one that they sent, they brought out with a kit at one point in time. The guy's bag oh, okay. is white with gray loops on the pocket. And then the, the other bag was pink. It was black. It's a black bag. And it had two dividers inside, or you could open up the dividers and make it one big container. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I probably got one of those lying around. I have like three of them, so that's what I usually carry for my shows. All right, y'all, we are down to our last 10 minutes. Um... We were going to talk real quick, too, about what we're doing for our new consultants. So Donna already mentioned uh, texting them every Monday and sending them their, like, sales to date to keep them on track and a tip to go from there. Um, does anybody else have anything they want to share with new consultants real quick? I've been typically going by the um, My Recipe for Success. Okay. That's what I've been using, and I just went to the front part of it, and it just has everything, you know, the, the list. And so what I do is I just text them off that list and just say, this you should be doing this, this, and this. And then so, I just kind of follow up with them. But I really like the idea of the 60 days to success because I think we should probably be doing that on a fairly regular basis. Well, why don't we get people geared up? You want to start with it next week? You want to start with it in March week? Well, what is we need to decide to when. I mean, I don't think we could do it during the day because a lot of people work on our team. Yeah, that's true. So we need to find a pick a day that will work for everybody. That's going to be the hardest thing. I guess we need to pick a day that we can commit and then just invite them that we can do. All right. Well, I'll put a, well, one of us can put a poll out there. Mary or I will put a poll out there with a couple of dates, and we'll narrow it down that way. Does we need to get scheduled? Please like, don't do a Thursday. I, okay, that's fine. What'd you say, Terry? I said no Thursdays. No Thursdays. Oh. Um, the other thing that we're going to have to watch out for is we got Thanksgiving. If we were to start the uh, six weeks on the twenty second. That would be next week. That would take us to the 26th of November. So that would take us to the week after Thanksgiving. I don't think we should go too far into December because if we do, we're up against the holidays and nobody's going to do anything. Yeah, well, I think we can start next week also, so we just need to nail down the date. 
So we'll talk well, about wonder, that. I'm just throwing this out here. Why about last in January? Don is trying to say something. I can't. Sorry. I was wondering about a Sunday night. We don't want to like mess up their show schedule, and most people don't do a show on a Sunday night. So I'm wondering about a Sunday night. I mean, I it ain't the best for me, but I mean, I can make it work. So, I mean, after church kind of thing. And it's only like a Sunday night, afternoon so. show, so it have to be a Sunday evening thing, and that I don't know if that still works for people. Yeah, that's why I'm saying Sunday evening after after evening church. That's a possibility. Just because, you know, if we do it Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday, I possibly may have a party. And I don't want to, like, you know, not do a party. I'd rather do it on a day we wouldn't normally have a party. Yeah, that makes sense. We can run out by people. All right. Um, I mean, yeah. I've heard others do Sunday night. The girl that I shared, you know, that gave us the info, she does Sunday night. So. Okay. Terry, what were you going to say? I don't remember. <laughs> Sunday night works great for me. All right. The other thing that I was going to mention is I just got done doing a six-week call series with my team and my uplines teams, our whole organization. And we took the basic steps that Mary was talking about in the recipe for success. And each week was a different <coughs> call from somebody, not us. So they heard it from somebody other than us. So like we had Laura Polito. Tanya Brozlowski, Shaprice Pennington, wow. um, uh, Yvonne Platisha, I'm trying to think of who else was on there, and two others, I can't think of everybody at the moment. But anyway, each week we recorded the calls, and so I'm going to post them on our group. You guys can listen to them, you get phone calls, a little bit of Q&A afterwards, sometimes, sometimes just a little bit of chatter in the beginning, no more than 30 minutes. Um, at most, I believe, I don't think they went over that, maybe 35 times. Um, we just kept it very short and sweet, but it was nice to hear things from people other than just us, so that sometimes some of the stuff that we've said to our new consultants clicks a different way to hear it from somebody else. And there were some fantastic nuggets of information in those. So I'll post that on our page, and you're welcome to share that with your new consultants. Um, they're all YouTube videos, and so they may not know the faces, but they're still big people. And we read off the accolades of the people who are speaking. So you know that we're, you know, we didn't just find some schmo to do it. We found people who are really good at what they're doing. Um, and that'll give them something to work on. So y'all are welcome to use that. Um, unfortunately, none of my actual new consultants got on and listened to it at the live call. But they've all, I mean, some of them have been. But I just think it's a great resource. So if y'all are interested, I'll put that out there. Sounds oh good. yeah, absolutely. I'm interested okay. in anything. All right. Okay. <laughs> if anybody has anybody in the uh, hopper on the 23rd from eight to nine, Pamper Jeff is doing the recruiting webinar again. Yes, I saw that. I I feel like I need to do better about my recruiting this month. I don't know. I just. This I'm doing soon. I don't know what I'm doing. This month flying by too quick for me. I can't even keep straight with anything. I'm going to try to get in front of more people. What I remembered what I was going to say was once we do the first, you know, the, the six weeks to success, we can always repeat that sometime next year too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we need to run them, you know, back to back as long as we're recruiting good and having more team members added. So, yes. Like, I mean, the first of the year, maybe even. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to do the right into director's one um, after this first six weeks to success. Oh, that's even better. Series. Great. Yeah, the director's Great. series, it goes right after that. So we'll start that one right after. Um, the, the hard with that one, though, like Mary said, is that right, it's right into December. Um, so we need to kind of work around the holidays and stuff with that, too. But... Well, I I'm think wondering, what, if, what if we do much time six, off in between that we'll lose everybody by January too though so right but what if we do our six weeks to success and then do something in December to keep them booking so that they go into January with a nice strong schedule I like that maybe some kind of January training or something just something you know more simple and because we're robbing they take you know some time off for the holidays but do some kind of simple training and then keep well, off 
what we could do is we could always do the six weeks to success. Y'all can view these six phone calls yourself and we could always implement that between the two because it's a 20 minute phone call and they could do that at their leisure that week. You don't have to sign it on a day just because it's a video that's already done. They could do one video a week. We could post it for whoever that week or you guys can give it to your team as, as needed. That would get you through the holidays and then we could be loaded up for January. Because what it is, teaching people from start to their first and the last phone call is how to finish your 90 days strong. So that would work them right into this, you know, the six weeks right into January. Because I think what happens is everybody takes that last couple of weeks of December off. And then what happens is that they, it's like they completely forget about their business and then they go into January and they've got yep. nothing. And typically January has been double points, double trip points. I wish they'd hurry up and announce it. We have to wait till that game November 1st. I know. Um, yeah, it will be good. I think that'd be a good thing to do. I, and, and I always, the last gal talked very strongly been, about how your 90 days from now is what you're working on. So like you work in October, November, December, January, your January will be strong. You work a good November, your February is strong, you know, that kind of thing. But I don't think people really think about that. No, but I think we need to put it out there a bunch. And, you know, and I think we have to really get them into the um, business mindset. Because I don't think a lot of people, it, you know, if you own a business, you don't think about it. It's not just, oh, yeah, I think I better work on my business today. You know, you should, you know, I hate to put it this way, but you should always be on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Tanya said something very, um, we're less than a minute, we might get cut off, so I'll try to say this quick. She said something that was really interesting, and I've heard it before, but it just kind of drills it, drills it in. She said, you would not go to work in half work. When you go work for somebody else, you do your best, you work overtime, and you're making somebody else get rich. So why are you not doing the same thing with your business? Right. When you go work for somebody else, you do their overtime, you do all of their stuff. When it comes to working for yourself, you don't do it, and that, should, that needs to change. And I thought that was like a perfect way. And I'll come up with some something. I'll post something on that so we can post it. I'll make a Canva photo of.